<laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, uh, welcome to the VO Dojo Ask the Sensei. Uh, I'm Tish Hicks. I'm the, the CEO and Master Sensei of VO Dojo here in Burbank, California. And this is our monthly free Q&A webinar. Um, we are joined each month by our wonderful techno sensei, Dan Leonard. And we have our team members, uh, Dana Suko, our talent support, and uh, Joshua Edwards, who is our COO. And we are super excited to have our guest sensei, my friend and voiceover colleague and fellow Northwesterner, James C., joining us. So um, uh, if, you, if you're here, you probably know a little bit about the dojo. Um, we're a full training program. Um, designed to guide, support, connect, and accelerate you every step of the way from I don't know to working pro. So um, I see that uh, people are finding the poll. So um, we like to, um, if you can fill that in, um, we like to get a sense of where people are at. So as we are answering questions, we're kind of um, calibrating them to, to maybe where your most, you know, where mindsets are. So that's really helpful for us. Um, if you want to put in the chat where you're calling from, that's always good to, to hear where, where that is. Um, and how this is going to roll is um, it's a Q&A, so we'll need your questions. So I'll introduce Dan and I'll introduce James. And then if you want to start putting your um, questions into the Q&A box at the bottom, the two cartoon bubbles there, um, we'll, be taking, um, we'll be taking all your questions from that um that q a list um so yes so dan why don't you introduce yourself how are you doing what i'm going? doing just fine this morning tish uh i'm i'm dan leonard i am the home studio master uh if you have questions about a home voiceover studio i've built hundreds as opposed to the five or six everybody else talks about and everybody's an expert in one studio their own, but I work with everybody. And if you need help or have questions about home voiceover studios, now's a good time to ask. <laughs> Excellent. Yay. Thank you for being here, Dan. And James, hello. I'm so glad to, this has been like in the back of my mind and my heart to have you here. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited that it's time. So introduce yourself. What are you up to? Uh, well, the, the timing of this dojo could not be better because I think I'm at the apex of my sense of inflated ego. And, uh, you know, it's I have to remember this particular moment when all the lean time happens, which will always happen. Mm -hmm. But this is like a, a great time where I'm just uh, full of self-importance and, and uh, you know, me driven. Um, let's see, so recently... Um, well, actually, maybe maybe start yeah. with what we probably know oh. you from, right? Um, you you might know James from... from little things like... Okay, like um, I've done <laughs> um, mostly animation. Mm -hmm. um, I started with uh, Jackie Chan Adventures way back when. Um, mm -hmm. I played Jackie. That's how I got my start. And uh, I've done Kung Fu Panda, Legends of Awesomeness. Um, I've done King of the Hill. Uh, what else? Um, Avatar. Uh, Avatar. Yes, I am. <laughs> that's actually the most. Uh, I, I think that's what people know me from the most is is a certain cabbage merchant. <laughs> <laughs> and um, recently, I've been able to play uh, Stillwater in the Apple TV Plus uh, show called Stillwater, which has been great because it's from based on a book that I used to read to my son. So mm -hmm. that was excellent. And, um, but just in the last few days, uh, I had an episode of The Simpsons airing, which was great. I mean, you know, you feel like uh, you've gotten the golden ticket. It's been- Yeah, that's like Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> exactly. And uh, later today I'll be doing uh, dubbing for, for a Netflix show, you know, so it's live action dubbing from probably a Korean TV show. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm doing, I've done a lot of that during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you like video games, uh, I've done um, Drake's Fortune, the, uh, uh, those, that the Uncharted series, 
Um, I've done The Ghosts of Tsushima recently and mm -hmm. Final Fantasy VII, the remake. Um, and just yesterday, I finished um, audiobook recording for a novel that I wrote that will be coming out through HarperCollins uh, on May 6th. So that was, so is, I've done a lot of different things. What is the title of the novel? Recently. Yeah, I've- um, What is the title of your novel, oh, James? Um, all Kinds of Other. Mm -hmm. It's a young adult novel. Um, and so uh, just recently I've done a lot of different types of things. So that's, so it's a great time for people who might be interested in either dubbing or, you know, video games or any kind of animation, audiobooks, those kind of things, because it's kind of in my head right now. So, yeah. Well, and I think, I think that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing about having, um, you know, it's, to, to understand because I think a lot of people begin and they go but I want animation and just animation and understanding that even when you're at the biggest levels of of animation that having a diversified portfolio is still part of the game like that's part of it and being able to do all the other things um right to, because to you have the right you have the equipment you have the knowledge Mm -hmm. So why not do as many things as you can? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and you might find that one thing is more of a, I don't know, has a special niche in your, in, in your wheelhouse, you know, mm -hmm. like audiobooks is not for everyone because it's very, it takes a lot of discipline. It takes long hours, mm -hmm. but some people love it. So it's great to experiment with all sorts of disciplines. Yeah. And find, find what works in your, what, what works in, works it resonates with you and then what fits into the rhythm of your existence at the moment right right yeah right. <laughs> yeah but it's been great because when the pandemic started everything shut down here in los angeles except for voiceover mm -hmm. and it became imperative that if you wanted to work you needed to kind of devise your own space to be able to record but mm -hmm. once you had that set up um, opportunities kept happening because the studios wanted to do something. And so they filtered it all into animation and other voiceover. Mm -hmm. Right, right. The things where the stories can still be told without the people. Being exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, and Dan, you know, you know, for certain that that mad rush at the beginning of the pandemic of not only people who are new to voiceover not having studios but people who were really established and used to going to studios all the time so they had to get yeah absolutely it was uh, it was a mad rush and mm -hmm. more of a a panicked rush by a lot of people <laughs> who should have been had their own home studios to audition from all along. We've only been warning them for about 15 years. <laughs> and when it happened, I don't know anything. I, how do I do this? You know, I'm talent. <laughs> right, uh, right, right. I always found somewhat offensive. Um, you know, having been doing this for so many years and always having to engineer my own stuff. And yeah. uh, so it's it's not rocket science, guys. It's you know if you can run our cassette recorder, you can do this. Um, <laughs> it to make it way too complicated, and it's yeah. not. It's, it's yeah. actually quite simple. And well, that's though, the, though the, to oh, go ahead. the 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 other side of it though is it's it's been really funny that when you go to the studios, you have a, an engineer that will move your mic and adjust you and make sure everything is right, and you have that feeling of. Oh, I don't want to touch anything. I don't want to ruin right, right, right. it. Right. Well, that's the ethic in the studio, right? That's the right. like you do your yeah. So you've yeah. now had to come around uh, you know, 180 degrees to be able to do your own adjusting, do your own EQ, mm -hmm. all of that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it, cool. if at all. If at all. But, right, right, right. Yeah. Excellent. Were you guys ready for some questions? Sure. sure. Okay, let's start at the top. Um so Janet, who is just finishing up our You Should Do voiceover, um, joining us from the cast of Phantom of the Opera, um, asks, James, how did you find where you fit in the world of VO? I'm trying to discover where I might thrive. I, I started by doing, I, I had started by not even thinking about voiceover. I was an actor in California, getting little parts in, you know, 
uh, sitcoms and and uh, dramas, mostly as a delivery boy or, you know, some little lines. Um, and because of the Jackie Chan thing, where I just happened to audition on a fluke and I could make my voice match, um, I got mm -hmm. the part. And that really launched me into that. Um, mm -hmm. I think because of my theater training um, and my flexibility with my voice, I'm animation was really good, a good fit for me. Mm -hmm. Where uh, I did start doing commercial auditions. Uh, and I don't think, I don't know, I don't think that my voice is a typical commercial voice in a way. And so I really didn't book them. Um, and that was okay because the animation started taking off. Mm -hmm. um, so you try these things and, and you see, oh, wh where am I flowing? Where is, where is the current taking me? And where mm -hmm. are there stoppages? And just because there are stoppages doesn't mean you, you can't get through there, but you, know, you kind of are watching you know, all, mm -hmm. all the time. And audiobook, I've, I've just always loved well, reading you're aloud. You're a storyteller, right? Yeah, that, and, that's the yeah. tradition we came up in in Northwestern, and that's like what we, yeah, that's that's what we do. So. Right, and then the yeah. advantage of audiobook is it's just you. It's just mm -hmm. you. you. Often you're having to engineer as well. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you have a director, sometimes you don't. But if you like that kind of isolation, like for me, because I'm a little more introverted, I, I don't mind being in a <laughs> closet for <laughs> six hours at a time, then that might be a good a good place for you. It's the job for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you like the conditions of solitary confinement, it so might it's, just be the job. It's kind you. of like trying doors. Yeah. You try a door, will it open? Oh, let's go through. If it mm -hmm. if it's locked, you could either work on getting it open or or move on. I think it's just mm -hmm. kind of just trying doors. Yeah. And I think that I think keeping an um I think if if you, I think if you approach your the beginning of your journey with like the ethic of focused and like the ethic of working at it, like the focus, the focus of focus and intensity of working on it, but the but the connection of playing, that that's a great way to do it. I don't know. Let's let's see what happens. Let's diligently, consistently play. Right. Let's play. Right. No, I want to work on. <laughs> like um, you know, then allow uh doing stuff, showing up and allowing it to unfold with, you know, what, what, what your heart is telling you too. Like, right. You don't want to do stuff that you don't want to do because why do this? If you don't want to do it. Yeah. Right. Good. 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 Um, let, let's, uh, let's do another question. Um, Catherine asks, James, since you came up as the voice of my morning meditation today on the call map <laughs> and that, that's, do you do that in the voice of Stillwater? I do that, yes. Yeah, that's very so wise. Cool. And very, <laughs> Is it from Zen wise. Shorts? Was the was the children's book right? Um, I'm curious, how would those with decades of yoga and meditation practice, including teaching, teaching, find such clients and work? Huh. That that's a great question. I I'm not sure. I kind of got in through the back door. Mm -hmm. um, the the whole purpose of the Stillwater show is to teach kids mindfulness mm -hmm. um, through little parables, little koans. And so it was a natural fit for Calm, the app, and Apple TV to kind of merge and you know, be synergistic, as, as, it, mm -hmm. as, it, as, it, as they say, and, and have me do a few meditations. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not quite sure. I think there's probably some kind of um, they're lo probably looking for talent, but mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure like whether it's through the agencies or whether mm -hmm. they have their own in-house talent. Well, it, well, when you, when you did yeah. a session, it was with a producer from Calm and a Definitely. producer from Apple yes. TV or just, so it would be figuring out who the producers at those apps are, maybe right. and reaching out, reaching out to them. And yeah. you know, they have, they have sleep stories. Do you know this, Tish? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, if, if you have a very calming voice, mm -hmm. it would be perfect for, for there. 
And then if you take that all the way, there's also the whole realm of ASMR, which you can make millions of dollars <laughs> if you're really good. Um, there's another Northwestern gal who's uh, been part of the dojo who is like a really, really um, well-known ASMR girl. Uh, Gabby, I think is her name, G-A-B-I. But that's just fucking really quiet. Think the lean thing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the extreme of it. So there's all sorts of all sorts of, sorts of things to explore. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Uh, Dan, why don't we why don't we go to a tech question here? Um, uh, Jay Young asks, as a newbie coming into VO, what would you say is the next most important thing to build up a home studio? I currently have uh, a Sennheiser and an Apogee. Well, that's that kind of covers it. Yeah, well, you're done. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> no, no. No. There are there are three basics to having a home studio. Um, and and everybody's like, oh, I've got to have this equipment, I gotta have that equipment. Forget all that stuff. Take take a, an eraser and just sort of erase that in your mind. The three things are number one, acoustics, which has part A and part B. You want to prevent exterior noise from coming into the space you're in which is very, very difficult in a home studio. It's literally impossible without major investment. So we try to find the quietest place you can. Part B of that is preventing reflection of your voice, which, you know, I, and we could get into more detail on this, but, uh, you know, you need to have acoustical treatment in, a, in that space. Also, the louder you talk, the more the acoustics of the room come into play. So I think a lot of people tend to over project. They see a microphone, they, you know, they got a, a pop screen in front of there and suddenly think, I am on a microphone. I must talk louder. Stop that. Just it's an, <laughs> as, as as we teach, you know, it's a one-to-one -one conversation most of the time, unless you're doing animation, which does require a tremendous amount of, you know, ah! you know, that sort of thing. Um, number two is proper microphone technique, which I am currently uh, exhibiting right now. Uh, microphone should be upside down for a number of reasons. Uh, it should be at eye level, copy down underneath, because this way you can go Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, don't require a pop screen, despite what some people will say. And uh, it will uh, give you a clear view of your copy and allow you to gesticulate without banging the mic. Um, and third is setting proper input levels, which is, you know, a technical thing. But once you get it using to, to keep it real simple, uh, you look at the meter that you have in whatever software you're using, always in the green, always in the yellow with an occasional flash of red. If it's just in the green, you're too quiet. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. But so you need to deal with all three of those factors, get the right acoustics, learn how to set up your mic properly and then setting your input levels properly from your, your digital interface. And it's not that hard. Once you get that set right, you can go concentrate on other stuff like being a voice actor and not worrying about all this technical stuff. And then there's also, um, Jay also has, if, if, Jay, if your Sennheiser is a 416, that's sort of the higher end of what you would have in, in terms of microphone equipment. And right. an Apogee might be your travel mic or USB. Well, it um, depends on which mics those are, too. I mean, if right, it's right, right. Like yeah. Sennheiser Mark IV or, uh, you know. Oh, or, right, right, or, right. You know, but if it's a 416, you know, there's a special technique for using that, but it's an incredibly versatile mic. And by the way, an Epogee mic, you know, when used properly, sounds very much like a Sennheiser 416. It's yeah, just it does. It's just a mic, and so, but it's a matter of knowing how to use those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's helpful, Jay. Some some frameworks that you can be starting to think about. And then I think one of the one of the things that I, I you know, as as Dan said at the beginning, the reality is that everyone's setup is unique to themselves and their space that they're working in right now. Right. So that you know that's that's why Dan does consultations. So you can just you can you can read all about what everyone else is doing, but it really comes down to where are you at? You know what what street cleaners are coming all across your street um you know so so it's it's very it becomes very specific but those are great things to be thinking about so. and and i think that garbage day so they're in the alley right. <laughs> Sorry, Jay, go ahead. i think that someone like dan is kind of crucial in the 
process if you want to get your studio up and running without a lot of a lot of trial and error you know and spending a lot of money because someone like Dan someone who is a professional can listen to how you sound and can say can you position the mic a certain place or what if you had an acoustic you know it sounds a little dead over here um I started out having a studio, you know, having a little recording booth just for auditions. So it didn't have to be great. And when the pandemic started, I kept adding and thinking, oh, okay, I'm good now. And every time a, a, an engineer heard it, they'd be like, you know, what would be really great if you could just get one panel. And so slowly I changed everything, mm -hmm. but it was, it was really important to get their input because they're actually listening to what you sound like in your booth. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like you'd go to the doctor, right? <laughs> like, hey, doctor knows what to look for and how to think about things or notice what's happening and help you put it together. And then you can go. And I, and I, ha I have a service on my website, homevoiceoverstudio.com, where I have a specimen collection cup. Uh, mm -hmm. You just click on that. It's a Dropbox. Send me a raw piece of your raw audio. It takes me about 10 to 15 seconds to realize that, okay, this is a problem. This is a problem. I hear, I can hear the size of the room. I can hear how you're using your microphone and I will give you a very thorough analysis of what's going on in there. And if we need to do something a little bit more in depth, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, but find someone, you know, find someone on your team as, as you need to have someone like Dan who, who can just help you like, find them on your team, right? Like, I have this, I have this, I have this. Yeah, good, good, good. Um, let's go back up to Cam, Cam Cheney, what a good name. For an animation demo, typically how long should it be and approximately how many different voices? Um, what's your thoughts on that, James? Probably not more than a minute, I would think. Mm -hmm. Do, do, do that was, I think, I think, yeah, I mean, I think everything's just about a minute now. Yeah. Um, when we were start, when we were starting 25 years ago, it was two minutes, but nobody cares that much anymore. Um, um, and voices, I, I mean, don't you think it kind of depends on what you can do? Because you don't want to throw like, oh, I've got to show a lot of variety and then it not be great voices yeah you don't want your southern voice just because you could have a southern voice it's it's i think i think i think on any demo um on any demo um you want to show a range of what you can do mm -hmm. right um the all the facets facets um ranges of energies right so i would say in that 60 seconds if to show a range of what your voice and your acting can do right? Voice and acting, probably acting first. Um, and then also, um, like, like, what kind of, what are the tones of the tune, right? So, like, the different shows that you do, if you're on a, like, like, James, like, Jackie Chan is a little bit more action-y and more towards tune-y than Avatar, which is yes. really, it's like fantastical heightened reality, right? But the, right. in terms of the acting, you're in it, which is different than like Three Bear Bears or, um, or you know, some, or, or Rick and Morty or- right. you know, or, or Bob's Burger, which is very, you know, uh, kind of deadpan and, mm -hmm. and not too stylized. You're, you're sounding like yourself. Yeah. So you want to be able to show that range and- um, yeah, and, and I think it needs to just be a good ride. Um, yeah. We're actually doing, um, twice a year, we do a thing called Demo Listen Derby with our demo producers, uh, Brittany Cox and Ryan Ricks from Next Level uh, Voice Demos. But on March 17th, we do, um, we're doing the Demo Listen Derby. So if you have an animation demo or have a, any demo that you want to toss in, to toss in the mix, we basically um, take a couple of hours um, run, listen through submissions and run them through the gauntlet. That is the process of, you know, Ryan was, uh, was in casting as, as a sound engineer um, in the Pacific Northwest. And so we just run it through the process that he did when he was a gatekeeper. So you just get a real sense of what catches people's ear. And so it, it's cool. Um, but if, if you're, if you're making a demo cam, that would be a great thing to just 
open your open your ears and get a sense of what all good demos do and then you can apply it to animation and i guess in my opinion that you really making a demo is really taking a hard look at what you can do what you excel Mm -hmm. at because this is your calling card if it's kind of mediocre if it's kind of meh then that's how it's going to be received so you really need Mm -hmm. to take a look at what am I really good at? What is the focus that I can show? Oh, this is what I do. Um, I think some people go into it thinking, I have to do everything. I can do everything, any voice. But there's so there's so many people out there doing voiceover. They don't need you to do everything. They just need to know that you can do this thing really well. And mm-hmm. then it branches out from there. So yeah. highlight yourself. Don't Don't feel like you have to have a horizontal approach. Just highlight what you do best mm, that's beautiful that's beautiful yeah so, so so if if your voice is blue then show all the shades of blue mm-hmm. right yeah, yeah that's cool yeah awesome um i think you mentioned how you got into the animation demo the helicopter came and you got to be the lead in a major hit show <laughs> <laughs> So I suggest that um, becoming a movie star is a great way to get into animation too. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so and they've all crowded in now to, to uh, all of the shows, all the stars who have, who were bored this whole time, they decided to do animation. So you may not have firsthand experience, but it, as you, uh, be, but you had that first experience. So you learned on the job what it was, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, in terms of knowing what you know now and perhaps meeting people, right? Because you've been working on shows. So perhaps you you might have some insights of, I don't know, it might be, it might be different because when you take a helicopter, you might not know where the doors are, right? Because you just, I don't know, I just, I just arrived here. And it's not, it's not, you know, and that happens, but like, what would you, what would, um, what do you notice? What would you say now? What would you notice now? I, some of the people who, I notice who are starting, uh, they've worked with professionals in the field. Mm -hmm. So they've worked with casting directors, they've worked with um, voice directors. um, And I think that's, I think that's really important because not only are you growing in your craft, but you're making, like you said, you're making connections, you're making, you're networking. And Mm -hmm. so they may think of you like, oh, uh, I'm casting this and this. I'll throw them this character because I know they can do it because I've been working with them. Yeah, They're, I think yeah. I think it's it's building relationship and mm-hmm. getting getting to be known um, and being someone that people can trust. Yeah, because being a part of a show is a big responsibility. It's it's like a big responsibility. A lot is riding on everybody. On, the, on that show. So mm-hmm. I think that's, that's really cool. That's, uh, we just had Ned Lott as a Fight Club director. He's the guy who casts Disney features and Pixar features and Studio Ghibli features. And you really get a sense that that is really how he works. Like I get to know you, I get to know what you can do. I get to know that you're a person who shows up. Um, yeah, and, and loves this. So. And I'd say also if there are, uh, people of color here in the audience mm-hmm. this is a really wonderful time to be good at voiceover mm-hmm. because they're really looking for people who uh, reflect mm-hmm. the experience or the culture of who they're voicing mm-hmm. um, no, yeah. do you, how, in, in your own experience James obviously yeah. a lot of the roles that you've been able to do it's like that's you you are so it yes. makes sense right do you what uh what's your experience with that then it used i mean you know since i'm ancient um it <laughs> used to be that it, it really didn't matter you know i mean mm-hmm. in king of the hill the the main lao uh character was played by a, a white man and 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 i think he did an amazing job i think he mm-hmm. really put in the work he did it but that's not I don't think that is happening now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. For instance, doing The Simpsons, it was just a small line. And 
I'm sure they could have given it to Hank Azaria. They could have given it to Harry Shearer. And that's what they would have usually done. Mm -hmm. But I think now, thank goodness, they're trying to be more mindful of balancing those scales of opportunity mm -hmm. um, and authenticity. Mm -hmm. Um, and and so that's so this is a, a really good time, especially I notice in uh, audiobooks, they're really looking for narrators who who reflect the book's uh, character. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're really looking for own voices in that, and so it's a it's a really good time to get in mm -hmm. if you if you that's, can. That's fantastic. That's yeah. fantastic. Yay. Um, there's a couple of process questions. Um, uh, maybe we can combine Tia and Michael's great questions. Um, so Tia asks, how did you develop all your different character voices and how do you keep track of them? And maybe piggybacking on that, Michael asks, um, a difficult read or, or audition that you approached differently. Oh. That's process, two process questions. All the different characters, I mean, I know, I know through getting jobs, what people think I'm good at, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a certain wheelhouse I do have. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying I'm stereotyping. I'm, I'm not pigeonholing myself, but you know, if I get cast as old, old Asian men, <laughs> then I work on that and I find all the shades of that. Mm -hmm. um if you know if i if if they're looking for something energetic that's kind of me or if um you know so it's not so much that i'm keeping track of different character voices as it is just um what what is the what's the need what's the, what is the copy telling me so it's so there are certain Okay, if I read copy and it's an Asian old Asian man, I know. Okay, I can be the gruff Asian man. I could be. I could have a higher tone and be kind of the silly Asian man, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it really has to do not with let me throw something at it, but what is what what's what it's serving the audition. Mm -hmm. um, it's. I think it's death in an audition if you just throw out your generic stock character mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. because and and this goes to michael's question the the times that i wish i had done better was when i listened back to my audition and it's fine it's exactly what the copy says it's you're doing it it's perfectly serviceable but they're going to get like 30 of those mm -hmm. right they're just going to hear the same thing because oh yeah so he's da 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 da, da. where i wish I had done better w was when I could put my own twist on it. I could mm -hmm. s find something underneath or find a different way to do it. And often that's why you do two takes of an audition. You can give them kind of what they expect mm -hmm. done really well, but then mm -hmm. you can also give them a take, which is unexpected, which has some, uh, crests and, and valleys that, that, aren't readily apparent. Mm -hmm. And that will make the casting person say, oh, well, that's an interesting thing. And maybe you'll get called back or maybe they'll cast you for that. So, yeah. yeah. So it's, well, what, yeah. yeah what the, one of the things, one of the things at the dojo that we, we consistently say and catch ourselves saying is that there is no they, there's only we. So, so e even if you if you add that into the mix of whatever you're doing, then you're already in the collaborative process, right? If there's they, then like, oh, what do they want? And oh, what what outfit should I put on? Um, what what do they want? As opposed to like, what are we creating here? So, what story are you making? How can I serve the story? Mm -hmm. Wait, we are doing that, and then and then the casting director hears, ooh. I want James to be part of our we mm -hmm. because I res like oh well, that that one I want him to come play with us. Wait, I mean, it, he it's play like, together. It's mm -hmm. like acting. I mean, it's it is <laughs> acting. It's it's what could, what do you bring to the table? What what are you, what are your strengths that will make this character something full and wonderful? Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, this is an interesting and unique situation. Rob, uh, Rob with two Bs asks, I've been voicing animated mascot of PA Lottery for the past five years. Steady Congratulations. Union. Yeah. Character is very well known in the Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware area, but I'm clueless oh. as to how to parlay that into more work, particularly animation character. Not much of that here in Philly. Um, oh, and then a, 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 a tag along tech question. Every room has windows. What's the best trick for blocking sound? Mm. Well, I, I, I first start out, Rob, saying that you know, Philadelphia, while a wonderful town, is not the center of the internet universe. Uh, this is what's going on today in the voiceover world and has been for the last 20 years is that the world is your marketplace and that you've got to learn the different ways of finding people who are going to hire you in different places. You know, it's not going to be just local phone calls. Remember local phone calls? <laughs> Oh, Dan, yeah. maybe they don't. <laughs> you know. Hello, pages. You know, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, don't limit yourself to Philadelphia, which I'm, you know, I know I won't make any Philadelphia. And that, that's a mindset shift, right? It is. It absolutely yeah. is. Because you, remember, voiceover is an entrepreneurial business. It is not show business per se. Uh, you've got to go out and you've got to find your own work. Uh in order to you know, make a living and get yourself away from being a hobbyist to actually making a living and attracting the attention of an agent or somebody who knows that you're making money and therefore will want to work with you. Yeah. Uh, and as far as blocking sound from windows, uh, well, it depends on how noisy the neighborhood you are uh, in is. Uh, and uh, But a quick trick from that is people don't realize that microphones only hear on one side. Uh, so if your 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 room is properly acoustically treated, uh, have the microphone you know talk towards the window because the sound will be coming from the other way, and if you're you have acoustical dampening behind you, it will it can it can limit the uh, the incoming sound just a little bit. But you've got to be in a good isolated sp space. So if you have a closet, <laughs> unless it's a closet with a window, in which case. You know, block up the window <laughs> but reversing the mic i i have found works really really well don't talk you know to the mic with the window behind you because the sound's going to be coming from that way so talk. oh that makes sense that's interesting so talk away from the uh, talk towards the window mm -hmm. talk into the bush um, um um yeah and then i think you know what one thing that comes to my mind rob is that understanding a character for the function of a commercial might have a little bit different flavor or feeling um, than a, a, a character, an animated character in a show, right? So that, you know, that's a kind of a distinction. Obviously you can have it as a, um, as, as an anchor and as, and as something like, a, you know, a feather in your hat and that you've been, you've had a, you've had a campaign and a client for five years is always like, ding, ding, ding. Um, it's, it's great, but I think that, you know, just making sure that you're understanding how you're using your animation skills, um, for the function of the process might, it, it might not be something, you know, unless, or, you know, or my, my, my imagination goes, I don't know, get someone in Philadelphia to, to develop, um, to develop, well, I guess it's the, it's the lottery's property, right? Uh, it's, but if it's well known, I don't know. Make a look, make a show about it. I don't know, like you know, what what else could you do? Um, so that that would be like my take, like understanding understanding the genre that you're serving, and how that may or may not may may or may not translate. And I um I don't know if Rob is part of the union. Um, uh, well, it's a steady union gig, so we'll oh okay, yeah. So SAG AFTRA <laughs> has a lot of um, webinars now about the business and how to you know promote yourself in this arena or that arena mm -hmm. so that might be worth checking out there they, they have them almost every week i think um and specific to voiceover so yeah um yeah absolutely um 
and I think I think also, Rob, you know, um, find the opportunities to meet the people who are doing the things, right? You know, come come join us at Fight Club. Come come meet the meet the people who are the decision makers, so they get to know you, and then you can keep in touch with what you're doing. I think you know, if you have the if you have the chops, then you need to put the chops on the plate and then feed them. You know, share and, them with people. And, so yeah. And like Dan said, if he has a steady paying gig it it's much makes you much more attractive <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. i mean that you yeah. that people are willing to pay you so uh yeah. you're, you've got a leg and, up there and also i don't know what your representation is situation is but now that the pandemic has opened things up um i know ned saying that he's working with people around the world what what it used to be i think if you want animation move to la baby move to la mm -hmm. you have to still do that hollywood thing um the pandemic has just cracked it i don't know if wide open but it's cracked it for sure um so you know just start thinking about don't don't limit yourself right. i think that was dan dan's point too yeah um anonymous says do you have to be a fast reader to do audiobooks i like to read but i don't read much i don't i don't think you have to be a fast reader in fact, um, I think I think oftentimes it's finding the right pace, pace that you're not a fast reader, right? Because we need to be with you. We, you need to let ideas land, right? Um, it's more of a um, you have to be a careful reader, careful and, reader, mm -hmm. and you have to, you know, be able to color, mm -hmm. color what what you're reading. You need to be able to to evoke the words of the book. Mm -hmm. So it has, I don't think it has anything to do with speed. No. Yeah. And I also think, I also think that one has to be very serious. Like um, who runs marathons? Um, not me, <laughs> not um, me. <laughs> but Ezra Weiss does. Ezra Weiss runs has run marathons of marathons. Like he, he runs marathons, that's what he does. But I think if you think of audiobooks like that, like mm -hmm. I like running. Oh, if you like running, that's cool now run a marathon <laughs> do you yeah. still like running okay cool you know i think you have to understand what what is about and i think you have to be very delicate with your passion for literature because it becomes your job mm -hmm. and um so if you if you like to read want to make sure that you want to keep on liking to read <laughs> right. right that it's not like oh and there's a lot there's a lot of elements and then with anything the more you do it the easier and more facile it comes i mean audiobooks and being good at audiobooks and you do have to be able you do have to maintain you do need to be able to maintain a production a production pace right that's another thing when you're reading an audiobook you have to maintain a production pace so that's about a quality and you know because you're doing a job and getting something done um so that's a whole nother consideration and the faster you do that, the more you get paid because in audiobooks you get paid per finished hour. So if it takes you two hours to do one at one finished hour, then that's a good ratio. If it takes four hours to do right. one finished hour, then you're just making less money and doing more work, right? So it's kind of, there's a lot of little variables in there. Um, but if you're on the on the fence, um, you know, this is, this is what everyone that I've ever worked with and what I tell people too, if you're on the fence, um, Pick up a book that you really like. Choose at least an hour a day, maybe two, um, to sit down and read the book out loud every day. And if you still like it, then um, pick up a book you don't like. And <laughs> do that. Like a, 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 a or you don't, you know that, and and then do it, and then see how that feels, and balance out what those experiences. Um, all the books will be read if you don't read them. So if it's not for you, don't do it. Yes. It don't 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 do it if it's not for you. It'll everything, I mean, will, be, everything will be okay. I I'd add to that. You should do that the thing with reading a book, but do it for four hours. Four hours, right? And we'll see start. when you come out. Do I like being in this room for four hours just reading? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Because because in order to get a book done, you're going to have to spend a lot of time in the booth. Yeah. Um, and talking about talking. Much. And it's yeah. all you. It's mm -hmm. it's nothing but you, which is lovely in some ways. But 
hard in the other. Um, I've got two resources that might be helpful. Ahab Breakdown mm -hmm. is a, 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 a subsidiary or a offshoot of Penguin Audio. Mm -hmm. And they're just now starting a um, database of voice actors. Not and supposedly it's not just for uh, audiobooks. It's for anyone to come in and find voice actors. Oh, that's so interesting. Called, I didn't yeah, realize I that. Element. The Ahab breakdown. So you and right now it's free. So mm -hmm. you can you can download your samples. You can uh, you know write up what who you are. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is uh, a philanthropic organization called Learning Ally. Mm -hmm. Learning and A L L Y. They're in Philadelphia, aren't they? New Jersey. New Jersey. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously you can do it anyway. They would know Rob's character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, they uh, used to be called Reading for the uh, Blind, and then Reading for the Blind and Dyslexic. And now it's just for anyone who has mm -hmm. reading challenges. Um, they are always taking volunteers to read novels, mm -hmm. textbooks. So it can really hone your chops uh, as far as audiobooks by by doing that with them. Yeah, I, I do that. I do I do the all the time. Every yeah. day. it's great. That that's a great that's a great way. Um, and then um, also, um, Ronnie Butler is one of our dojo senseis. Um, he he is doing a, the third encore of you should do audiobooks on April third. So if you're interested in that, uh, type into Diana. Because we we're um, we're enrolling for that um, the full day workshop with Ronnie Butler, who is up for some Audi awards again this year. But he's he's a fantastic teacher, and it's a great um, get great way to get a glimpse into how the whole thing works. Um, so check check that out if, if that's a route that you're exploring. Um, hey, um. Do, 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 do. What are the best? Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, what is this question Once you have an animation demo, what what would be some helpful tips? Tips with an animation once you have an animation demo? So hard because a lot of agents will only take people who already have a track record, right? Mm -hmm. um, what I've seen work the best is if when you're making connections with other voiceover people and they have representation, you could try to have them walk it in. That's, I don't know. I don't know. How do you feel about that, Tiff? It's all relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Once you have something, it's get to know people, get, pe get to know people and get people to know you, um, figure out what's going on. So if that's building a relationship to get to know an agent who has access, um, you might want to, you know, do some research. And if animation is your is your burn and yearn in, then you know, find out which agencies, you know, in LA, if you're burn and yearn in, then definitely you're wanna gonna you're gonna want to take a meeting with CESD, right? Um, you definitely, uh, you know. If you're looking for a smaller place, then talk to Porsche at Coast to Coast because they're like known for that. Um, who are you with now, James? Uh, DPN. DPN, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. And the bigger agencies have great animation departments. And, you know, so so do your research and, and talk to people. Um, get to get to know people. I don't know where you're where you're located, Jay, um, but I think that's the way to do it. You know, start start meeting people. Um, and then, you know, uh, I think with any demo or anything, what is the difference? If you get a pack, if you get a piece of mail, uh, if you get a piece of mail or a package in the mail, like, hi, this is a thing. You're kind of like, okay, this is a thing. But if you get a piece of mail and say, hi, your best friend said to send this to you because we know each other for a long time. We're like, oh, your best friend, you know my best friend? Awesome, what is in this package, right? right? So just understanding that, the dynamic of humans, right? And, and, right. So you'll you'll at least maybe get it on their desk, and mm -hmm. they'll take a listen because it's only a minute, right? Yeah. Or have um, someone, you know, or or work with a casting director and then have them call an agent for you. Right. Right. Yeah. I say keep your stuff out of the mud puddle is what I say. <laughs> if you can, right? Yeah. 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 Um. Cool. 
Uh, John Pan is currently a drama student at UCI and the what is the best way to get experience in VO? Um, any places to good start? Um, Theodoto is a good place. Um, in fact, um, right now, uh, Cynthia, who runs the grad program at UCI, is is in the You Should Do Voiceover class right now. Um, um, but yeah, there's there's lots of there's lots of great places that to to get foundations. Dojo is obviously one, but um, yeah, keep on keep on asking this question, and people will tell you different things, and then you go out and ask ask. Um, uh, you know, then you go out and follow up and talk to those people and see what resonates for you. Um, but but finding a class, you know, you should do voiceover is a great way to get started. And um, if you are currently a student in school, I just am like embracing and like saying, you're so smart, you're so pretty, you're so smart, because it took me five years out of, of a fantastic uh, theater program to discover voiceover. Now I go back and teach master classes at Northwestern because I'm like, dudes, like theater, like eating, try voiceover. <laughs> um, so, um, it's, um, it's really so, so smart to be doing it now while you're in school because it will serve you your entire career. So, um, so you'll, you'll, you'll keep on asking these questions. We'd love to talk with you if, if you're interested in Dojo, um, but keep on asking the questions and do it now. Do it now. <laughs> it's 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 super smart. Yeah. And don't uh, you think that um, there's been a lot of there's a lot of opportunities. People are making content all the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. to get experience and maybe to add to your your demo, mm -hmm. there are tons of people who are making little stop motion animation, mm -hmm. or they need voiceover for their for their movie that they've made. So trying to align with people to to yeah. do yeah. that will um, at least give join, you experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, join women in animation, right? You hook up with young animators. You know that's that's it. Um, yeah. Uh, use your imagination. You know, I always say like, if you want this, then then become curious. You know, or become. Um, you know, when I when I moved here from Chicago, I had had my I had had my helicopter come for. I had a, a, my first you know VO sessions, and I was like, that that's what I'm going to do. So I arrived in LA, and I was like. Everyone I knew from Second City was like, what do you do? Who do you know? What do I do? What do I do? And then I was just like, boom, on fire about it. And then that, then you get to know people and then you get to, you keep on doing it. So yeah, um, maybe a little veered from, <laughs> from hopefully that's helpful, John. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, this is interesting. This is like the state, state of the VO. Um, do you, uh, Bridget asks, do you expect the changes due to the pandemic are here to stay or will be eventually returning to studios? Should we get used to recording from home? That's a, that's a great question that gets asked a lot these days. Um, it's one of those, it depends sort of questions. Um, there are certain industries that are going to realize that why are we spending $500 for a big expensive studio and an engineer and all these people when somebody can sit in their their own studio or their own living room or their own spare bedroom and do this. And it sounds just as good if your studio is just as good. For example, my son is in the process of dubbing a show right now and we do it from right where I'm sitting here. Um, and, uh, you know, and of course now I'm like, well, do you need some other talent? How do you audition to do that? <laughs> he was lucky to get this audition because they were looking for somebody who was, who could do autistic. And uh, which, you know, I'm just do a deadpan like like you usually talk and he got the job. But, but you know, it's, it's that sort of thing. So I would say always be prepared to do stuff from home because there are going to be situations where they're like you have to have a home studio. And if you're not, you know, you know, in, in Hollywood or here in Southern California, you know, say you're in Des Moines. Why I always use Des Moines, I never know. It's because it's in the middle of everything. Uh, again, with remote capabilities, if you're good and you're very good at your business, you know, you can do it from anywhere. So mm -hmm. I, I think still, the when the studios reopen, and some of them have, and they are, you know, you know, sticking to uh, to COVID protocols. Uh, you can audition from home and you'll be able to go into the studios, but a lot of times they're going to be continuing to say, 
do you have a good home studio? Do you have Source Connect? Do you have that sort of thing? And if you have those things that are competent in using them, it saves everybody time and money, and you know you can get work that way. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say the same, James? I absolutely. I think I think it, you should think of a home studio like you think of shots, getting a demo reel. Um, it's it's just something that will give you an edge and that's all voiceover is about is finding the edge that gets you in the door mm -hmm. and i think i think also i i always say like even even when the studios were open um you know that you have you have your relationship with your home studio that's like you take a shower every day and then when you get to go to the studio that's like going to a spa <laughs> right like then you get oh it's nice and there's cucumbers in the water and they make you an omelet and as long as there's craft service it, it, right. it's <laughs> and there's M and M's and you know it's it's um so so then it's a nice it's a it's a nice it's a nice special lovely delightful thing it's the best thing in the world to go to the nice studio um, yeah. yeah um I just looked at the time we're having so much fun it is. It is almost top of the hour. Um, we've got a bunch more questions, but um, why don't we? Why don't we do this? Um, why don't we wrap up? And then what we usually do here is, um, well, Joshua, how do you want to handle this today? What do you, What are your thoughts on on how we can do the after party? Usually, what we do is we just kind of close close at the top of the hour. Um, mute and stop our videos. And then James, if you have a couple more minutes, Dan, if you have a couple more minutes, we'll we'll just quietly type here. We'll leave everything open, but it'll be as if we're not here, except that we're still typing in our answers, which I think makes it so then we're officially done. But you can it will we'll we'll do our best to answer questions. Um, yeah, and these are good questions, guys. Um, good, good questions. And you can always um, you can always get um, on the dojo calendar for a voiceover once over if you have other questions about things. Um, let's see, Dan, how do people keep in touch with you? Um, well, what's the best way to stand? Yeah, touch? it's real easy. It's uh, homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, One studio. One studio, yeah, uh, homevoiceoverstudio.com, and there's a contact button there, and of course my specimen collection cup is down there, which is also an excellent way to get a hold of me and start the ball rolling and making sure your audio is good. Excellent. And when is the OBS on? When when can it's we see? On that? all the time. Uh, all we, the time. <laughs> all the time. Um, <laughs> we we do it every uh, we record the you know two shows every other Monday live, and we love having people live so they can ask questions like we're doing here. Uh, but it's on Facebook, for, uh, Voiceover Body Shop on face on Facebook. Our home, uh, uh, our web page is vobs TV, and this week's episode is there. We were talking with, um, oh, who was our guest this week? Oh, it was uh, Mary Lynn Wooster. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, we've had Fred Melamed. We've had all sorts of great people on the show, and then every opposite week, uh, George Whittem and I talk tech, and everybody goes. Everybody, everybody wants to know what it is that you know whenever we talk people tend to listen but we just have a good time and uh, it's very informative yeah it's it's a great resource um yeah and james i know you you are more talented but can you tell us how and when we can get your book um when when still water's on but you know if 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 you would like to reach out, have people reach out to you, you know, or sure. sign up for your fan club or something. I, mean, <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a website called SeaWorld, S-I-E-W-O-R-L-D.com. Um, I'm on Instagram. Uh, there's a Facebook page. Uh, yeah. At James C. Um, and uh, my book comes out, all kinds of other. It comes out May 4th. That's the launch date. <laughs> It's kind of soon. I'm very yeah. excited. Um, we're going to be doing a, a little bit of a kind of a book celebration slash fundraiser for the um, Los Angeles LGBT Center that Friday, the hey. 7th. Oh, can we help promote it for you? Oh, please. I would. That would be uh, great. Yeah, let's keep in touch. That would be yeah. lovely to come for you. That's, and congratulations on both writing the book and publishing the book and making the audio book. <laughs> it's, it's, it was like two, two great tastes in one. It was like a <laughs> peanut butter cup of, 
of, <laughs> of jobs. It was great. So, yeah. Fantastic. And uh, Stillwater is on Apple TV Plus. And it's a and great, call. great show. And the call map, right? <laughs> yeah, and the, and the call map. So, yeah, that's so great. And then, guys, there's always so much going on at the dojo. Um, this is every Wednesday. Like, you can make this a destination. When, uh, the first, uh, this is the first Wednesday of every month at 10 a.m. Next month, um, Liz Atherton, who is launching uh, a new casting service called uh, Cast Voices, is going to be joining us. Um, so we always love to have you here. Um, you should do voiceover um, March and April classes are enrolling now. Um, if you're on your journey um, and want to take it up a notch, um, if you're halfway there, talk to us about you should do voiceover and then getting into the mystery to mastery program. We meet you where you are and to, you know help to take your career all the way. If you're in a working pro, um, touch base about nth degree. If you're tired of rowing alone, hop into our boat and we, we get together and we, uh, we uh, amplify our energies by coming together and setting, setting intentions and uh, supporting each other in getting, getting all what you're after going. Um, fight clubs every freaking week now, God. <laughs> we have fight clubs. We've gone from two to four. So um, check out the schedule. Um, Carly Silver from Sound and Fury is coming up on Friday. Um, where's my, I don't even, I don't have my little list here, but um, Chuck Wedge from Leapfrog. Um, uh, Renee Johnson from Disney Character Voices. Audu Padden, who's amazing. Uh, Adam, do, you know Audu from school, right, James? Mm. Audu Padden? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. He's a he's an anime an animator turned uh, director producer. I've worked with him a bunch. He's amazing. Um, so yeah, lots of opportunities. Um, and uh, touch base with us. You can sign up for VOO at uh, www.thevodojo. Um, I think uh, I think uh, Diana's got everything in there. And um, yeah, anything else we should say or do, Joshua? I miss anything i i just i can't stop saying legends of awesomeness I, that's <laughs> the thing that <laughs> that's the mantra for my day uh, so <laughs> thank you all for being here we so appreciate you and um yeah if you want to you know stay on and continue to respond to questions in writing we can do that uh but i'll i'll stop the recording uh, after we just have any last words from each panelist um any last words dan uh boy i could go on forever but uh, <laughs> no just uh, you know check out my website and uh we'll be by i'll if you're still on and, and you have a question that hasn't been answered i'll be in there to uh to type in an answer for you cool, cool, cool. don't go anywhere yeah. don't touch that dial <laughs> how about you james any last last words so glad you could be here oh no just thank you all for showing up and asking your questions and um it's if you can get into the VO world, it's it's wonderful, and the people, I, I'd say, are a really classy bunch of people. You know, they they're they're great. So, if we come do aboard, say that, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you're you're a classy bunch of people for being here, and um, so team uh, Joshua and Diana, thank you so much. We are here for you. Um, we've gotten so like the vision of the dojo has come so to fruition that we're saying like all dojo all the time. So there's there really is something here for you and we'd love to have you join us. So um, we'll see you next month uh, with Liz and uh, I've got a, I think I have a couple of minutes so I'll be typing what I can. And James, you're welcome to stay um, for as long as you can typing, okay. but we're gonna go, we're gonna go mute and video. So um, hang out if you can. And um, you also get the recording of this um, uh, if, you've, if you've signed up, so. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thanks.